Consider a flower in a vase. At any moment, light reflects from the flower in the vase. A screen in front doesn't show an image of the flower in the vase because there's too much overlapping of light. I show four sample rays from the top of the flower in blue and four dashed rays from the bottom of the vase. These and other rays overlap on the screen. Is there a way to keep the rays from overlapping? The answer is yes. Put a barrier between the vase and the screen. No rays get to the screen. But with a tiny opening in the middle of the barrier, a pinhole, rays get through and don't overlap. There's no space for overlap. And what's the result? Aha, an image of the flower and vase is formed on the screen. It will be very dim because very little light reflected from the flower and vase gets through the pinhole. But the image is sharp and clear. Here's the two cases side by side. The first cameras had no lenses and admitted light through a small pinhole. These were pinhole cameras. Can you see why the image is upside down? Did you make pinhole cameras earlier in your education? Where you cut one end off a small cardboard box and cover the end with semi-transparent tracing paper? And did you make a clean cut pinhole at the opposite end? And when you aimed the camera at a flower, you saw an upside down image on the tracing paper? Wasn't that fun? And you noticed that the tinier the pinhole, the dimmer and sharper the image? If you wanted a bright light source, you could point your camera to the sun. Then the pinhole image of the sun would be quite bright. But you don't have to make a pinhole camera. Hold a piece of cardboard with a tiny hole in it in bright sunlight. Sunlight getting through the tiny hole forms an image of the sun. Light from opposite edges of the sun define the edges of the small circular image of the sun on the ground. And by the way, if you make the tiny hole into a triangular shape, the spot cast onto the floor isn't triangular. You're not seeing an image of the hole in the cardboard. You're seeing an image of the sun, and that's round. Just go outside on a sunny day and look at spots of light on the ground beneath a tree. Openings between leaves in the tree act as pinholes. Here's Lil pointing out solar images beneath a tall tree. And here she is again under a yum banyan tree. Pinhole images of the sun are just about beneath every tree with openings between the leaves that are small compared with the distance to the ground below. But you know what? These circular images escape the notice of most people. They don't see what they're looking at. Amazing. Even some artists miss seeing them. But not the famous artist Renoir, as we see in this painting. Renoir has the solar images the correct size for the trees through which the images were cast. Now that you know about this, point out solar images to your friends. Knowledge is yum. Is ignorance bliss? Maybe in some cases, but isn't being knowledgeable better? Isn't that why you're engaged in this lesson? And how does the solar image look during a partial eclipse of the sun? That is, when the moon crosses in front of the sun in the sky. Here's Lil on a San Francisco sidewalk in 2012, just before a partial solar eclipse. The circular-shaped spots of light on her and the sidewalk are cast down through openings between leaves and the tree above. Here we see stages of the moon crossing in front of the sun, a partial solar eclipse. Later, when the eclipse was progressing, my niece Gretchen Hewitt took this photo. Note the crescent-shaped spots. Each is an image of the partially eclipsed sun. The crescents appear to be more numerous because many of the previous images of the full sun were overlapping, and slight overlapping wasn't obvious. The thin crescent images don't overlap as much. Here's lab manual co-author Dean Baird just before and during the same partial eclipse. The wall, ground, and Dean are covered with solar images cast by a nearby tree. Again, where overlapping of solar images don't show so well, the thinner crescents show very well. Here's Paul Doherty, the Exploratorium's senior scientist, who drove from San Francisco to Nevada, where the total 2012 eclipse was evident. 
Since the eclipse occurred at a time when the moon was farther from Earth than average, the moon doesn't fully block out the sun. What occurs? A seldom seen annular eclipse. A solar circle with a moon's shadow in the center. A nice classroom project is holding a piece of cardboard in sunlight coming through a window. And of course with a tiny hole punched in the middle of the cardboard. And near your feet, nice round images of the sun. A favorite exercise I love giving my students is to measure the size of a solar image and the distance between the image and the cardboard. From their measurements, calculate the diameter of the sun, given that its distance from Earth is 150 million kilometers. Yum! Since this is a screencast, I'll guide you into the answer. When you do this exercise, you'll find the ratio of image diameter D to the height H of the cardboard above the floor is D over H is 1 over 110. That means if the solar image has a diameter of 1 centimeter, the card will be 110 centimeters above the floor. Or if you hold it closer so the solar image diameter is a half centimeter, the distance between the image and the pinhole will be 55 centimeters. Whatever the relative distances, the ratio of the two remains 1 over 110. This is an average for the solar distance varies throughout the year. When you do the math, D over H equals big D over 150 million kilometers. Solving for big D, big D is 1 over 110 times 150 million kilometers. And that equals 1.36 million kilometers. So the sun's diameter is 1.36 million kilometers, very close to its accepted value. A good way to measure the diameter of a solar image on the floor is to first place a small coin where you expect the image to be. Then position the pinhole, not too close, not too far, so the solar image matches the coin. Then the coin's diameter is easy to measure. Do you know how many coins placed end-to-end -end would fit between the floor and the pinhole? The answer is 110 coins. That's right, 110 end-to-end -end coins fit between the floor and the pinhole. I want to leave you with a question. If 110 coins fit between the solar image on the floor and the pinhole, how many suns would fit in the distance from Earth to the sun? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.